with God. I ask that you forgive me today, Lord. I ask that you cleanse me. I ask that you wash away every part of me, God, that, that, that does not contribute to your kingdom, God. Every part of me, Lord, that is not pleasing unto you. Everything that I've done that you would not do, God, I ask that you forgive me of, Lord Jesus. Everything in my heart, in my mind, I ask that you would cleanse it, Lord Jesus, that you would make new newness of life in my heart. God, we ask that you would cleanse us. Lord, make us in your image, Jesus, that you would extract everything evil and unrighteous out of our hearts and minds and place within it everything that is good, righteous, pure, and holy, God. We ask that you would cleanse us today. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. And now after we've done that, let's just lift the Lord up today and invite him to be in this place today. Can we do that? Jesus, we love you today. We're so thankful, Lord, that for your majesty, God. We love you so much, Lord Jesus, and you're welcome in this place. Lord, you're welcome to be in this place to move however you see fit, Lord. We ask that you freely move about us, God, and minister in any way, Lord, that we would receive, God. We're asking, Lord, and we're opening our hearts to you, Jesus, that you would touch us, Lord, that you'd move amongst us, God, that your spirit would dwell in us today. Hallelujah. God, we trust you. We trust you to move and to mold and to, and to make us into your image, God. Hallelujah. Make us holy, Lord, for you are holy. Lord, make us holy, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Such a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. What a mighty God. Hallelujah. I think we're going to start off with a hymn today. Amen. I'm just feeling the Lord. And I know that one day I followed the plan of salvation. The initial plan of salvation. And I'm thankful that the Lord has helped me to continue to live a life of righteousness. But one day, he took that, that, that big pen. It was probably a Dr. Grip pen. It was a big one. It was a good looking one. And he wrote Brandon King down on that, on that book of life. And there's still an eraser on that pen. That pen still has an eraser. It's not, it's not permanent ink. But one day he wrote my name down. And I'm looking forward to him reading that name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together, shall we? Oh, my name. 
slave way up in glory he saved my soul from sin and shame i never shall shall forget the day the blessed savior wrote my name he wrote he wrote my name way up in glory he saved my soul from sin and shame i never shall shall forget the day the blessed savior wrote my name that I have made a ride with every single heart. He wrote my name on heaven's road. He wrote my name, wrote my name oh, yes, he way, wrote. Up way up in glory. He saved my soul from sin and shame. I never shall, shall forget the day. Blessed Savior wrote my name. He wrote my name way up in glory. He saved my soul from sin and shame. I never shall, shall forget the day. The blessed Savior wrote my name. Never shall, shall forget the day the blessed Savior wrote my name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for writing my name. I'm just thankful that he knows it, let alone that he's going to write it down. Hallelujah. I'm thankful, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Amen. My God is more than enough, He shall supply all my need. He is my El Shaddai, He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. My God is more than enough, He shall supply all my need. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me, Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. All of the earth is His, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of, Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Oh, all the earth, all of the earth is His, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs, when by my faith I know my God is more than enough. He shall supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai. He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh. He is my God. Jehovah Jireh. He 
is my God. All of the earth, all of the earth is His, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. So why should I worry about the highs and the lows, the ups and the downs? When by my faith I know my God is more than enough, He shall supply all my needs. He is my El Shaddai, He always looks out for me. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. All of the earth is His, and the fullness thereof. Everything that I need, you can be sure of. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Jehovah Jireh, He is my God. Oh, so why, so why should I worry about the highs and the lows? The ups and the downs When by my faith I know my God is more than enough He shall supply all my needs He is my El Shaddai He always looks out for me Jehovah Jireh He is my God Jehovah Jireh He is my God Jehovah Jehovah Jireh he is my God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're acknowledging today that you are the God of all creation. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up the Lord today. Come on, let's lift up the Lord for just a minute in here. Lord Jesus, you're the God of all creation. Hallelujah. We acknowledge you, God, the supreme being of all the universe. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord God. We love you, mighty King. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Jesus. Lord, we love you, God. Let's just take a second here. Let's just take a minute here to worship the Lord. Jesus, we love you, Lord God. Praise us to the name. Praise us to the name who was slain. Hallelujah. On the, thr on the, on the cross for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Why don't you just turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, wow, he's mighty. Wow. He's mighty, and we're mightily blessed. And we are blessed in so many ways and measures. We're blessed in family. We're blessed in loved ones and friends. We're blessed in, in community. Because I think St. Joe is a really great community. I really just believe that. I think St. Joe is a great place to live. I love it. Amen. And we're blessed in many different places in our lives. We're, we're blessed at the restaurant. We're blessed in our, in our homes. We're blessed all over the place. And we are definitely blessed in our finances. And, and one of the ways to stay blessed is to render unto God what's due His. Amen. And we're going to give you an opportunity to give tonight. If our ushers could come at this time, and if you'd prepare your offerings and tithes, we will receive that at this time. Amen. And when you come, I, I'm just, I love it. I like it when you put a big smile on your face. I just think you ought to do Give with gladness, not out of, not begrudgingly, not because, ah, oh man, this is the letter of the law, but give out of love today if you would do that. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand and bring that together. Amen.
sometimes a little talk is all we need. Sometimes we need a, a little bit longer talk, and sometimes we need to just bear all before the Lord. Amen. If you, if you, I just say if if you like to talk a lot, I mean the Lord will always listen. He'll always listen. Amen. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. And we'll go over to some quick announcements. Uh, we want to remind you that anybody who requested because of the Times DVDs, please get with the media and pick those up for $30 a set. Also, Easter, we'll have our Save Our Children offering, um, so please prepare for that. Our ladies' spring fling is this Saturday, March the 28th from 2 to 5 p.m. We'll be sharing new hairstyles, clothing exchange, and they'll have an inside picnic. And it's just going to be a, a, a whooping good time. So I, I would just like to hear the ladies, in anticipation of that, have a whoop right now. Can we do that together? All the <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right. There are some ladies excited about that. And I, I am sure, I'm sure they're going to have a wonderful time. They're going to be doing hair and doing all those things that ladies do. Amen. All right. So also, our ladies, if any ladies plan to attend our district Ladies Conference in Springfield, Missouri. The deadline to register for that is April the 2nd. So if you have that on your calendar, please uh, please get that done. If you have any questions, please see Sister Billingsley about that, and she can tell you about that. And also, um, on our, the Spring Fling this Saturday, please get with Sister B about what to bring to that for the, our insort, their inside picnic. All right? All the ladies said Amen. Once to remember, tonight is our youth service, our Sunday night youth service. It's going to be at 6 p.m. tonight. I want to invite everybody that's able to come. Everybody's open to everybody. Amen. So get a bite and come on back. All right. Also, uh, this uh, past Saturday, we had, excuse me, Thursday night, we had our uh, sectional uh, elections and um, meetings for our our board members, excuse me, and our, of all the members that are going to be uh, leading our section. And they had elections, and I just wanted to uh, relay that information to you, Brother Terry Sims, still the prayer coordinator reelected, Sister Melinda Gates reelected to our ladies' ministry um, direction. Uh, our youth director will now be Brother Marcus Robinson from Heart and Soul Ministries Church. Our Sunday school director will be Brother Craig Gates, again, re-elected. Our North American missions will be Brother Paul Brown. And our secretary, our sectional secretary will be Brother Gary Dornbach, re-elected to that. And re-elected to our presbyter, uh, Pastor David Billingsley. And so we're excited about that. Amen. We, we, uh, it, it's an honorable thing. Yes. It's very honorable. There's, there's a lot of ministers in this section. There's a lot of licensed ministers and, and to be esteemed that highly to help lead the section of this of, of, of this Kansas City area is just a great honor. So I don't think that we should take that lightly. I think that we ought to say we, we got a gym. Yes. We got a gym. Amen. 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 Well, we're uh, we're gonna continue on in worship today, and we're gonna we're gonna sing an old favorite to many. And there's there's people from all walks of life that know this song, and it's a song that many can connect to, and and I hope you do that today. Amen. Let's worship together as we sing Amazing Grace. was blind 
Thank you, mighty Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus, for saving somebody like me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Amen. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. Amen. I, I need... I need the word. 
the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I need God. I need the Word. I need that. I, I can't, I won't, I'm not able to continue on in a righteous lifestyle without the Word of God in my life. I'm unable. I'm incapable. I don't have the faculties among me to live a righteous lifestyle without the Word of God. Amen. And we're, we're coming to the time that, that we are able to receive the Word of God. And we're going to invite our pastor to this pulpit, amen, to do whatever he sees fit. Amen. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Amen. Pastor, would you, would you speak to us today? Thank you, Brother Brandon. I'm glad to be standing here today. <clears throat> Realize I could have left this life many, many years ago. And, uh, but we are here today. I believe that uh, we are here by God's divine hand. I believe God has ordained this day. He, he knew where we would be on this 22nd day of March, 2.30 in the afternoon. He knew exactly where we would be. Amen. I'd like to speak to us for a little while this afternoon. And I realize that we have a youth service later, so I don't anticipate being lengthy today. Uh, hopefully we can share what the Lord's given here in just a few moments. Um, but I believe that we are living in one of the most... Uh, momentous times that we have ever, ever lived in. Uh, I'm concerned because <clears throat> I don't feel like there is a, a consciousness or an awareness of really how powerful an hour that we have embarked upon. Amen. Uh, there are some that believe that things are going to just continue on as they always have. But I'm here today to um, say I don't subscribe to that. I, I believe there's coming some changes. Uh, and when I say that, I'm talking about some good, positive changes in relationship to the kingdom of God. Um, the, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And if there ever was a time that uh, I believe that we have brought, been brought into the kingdom, I believe it is now. Matter of fact, I believe that many of the, the years that we have invested in, or the Lord has invested in us to bring us to where we are right now is really for the greater days that is yet ahead of us. And sometimes I think that we lose sight of that. And if I can, by the grace of God, Help us this afternoon to be reminded, if nothing else, that we are on the threshold of greatness like we have never seen it in any time in our life. Come on, the, words, the word is true. And, and there's many words that have been spoken in these last several weeks and months that we should be totally convinced that God is about to do something that we have never seen before. I hope that you would subscribe to the believer and say, I'm going to believe that there's greater things coming. Things that my eyes have never seen, some things I've never been a partaker of, but it's on the way. I'm not talking about an illusion or something that's elusive, but I believe that what we're speaking of today is going to become a reality. And I certainly don't believe that we are that far away. But my concern again is that somehow there can be some awareness raised this afternoon and, and to believe that what God is about to do is that we want to be a part of it. We don't want to miss it. I'd like to read a few verses in the Gospel of Luke chapter 19 and verse 41 through 44. Uh, this is a time that 
Jesus wept over Jerusalem, and there was a reason that he tears filled his eyes and he wept. It was, had some depth to it. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. Behold, the day shall come upon thee, that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. I believe it's important that we know the time of the Lord's visitation. Uh, the Lord is with us. Come on, nudge your neighbor, say the Lord is with us. He's with us. What I'm speaking of this afternoon is a visitation of the Holy Ghost like we have never experienced before. Amen. Would you pray with me for a moment? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord today. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit, Lord, that is wooing us, drawing us, Lord, preparing us. And I pray, Lord, that the word of the Lord today would find lodging in every heart and every spirit and help us to be gleaners of your good word and prepare for the great things that are before us. God, as your people, Lord, I bear your name to this generation. And we thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I'd like to preach about a divine visitation of the Lord. And, and I believe this happens when uh, we just began to realize and understand that God, amen, is going to do something in these last days, either with me or without me. And I am determined to be in on it. That, that's how I feel today. I, I, I don't want to be clueless and I don't want to be left on the outside. But I, I want to know what's happening in the spiritual dimension. And I want to be in on it. Anybody else want to be in on it? I believe that, I believe that you do today. Amen. And I, I'm talking about, amen, the, the moves of God that take place in in referencing just the, the call of Moses when he was on the backside of a desert and, and there was a bush that was burning and yet it was not consumed. There was something, amen, about that that he, 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 he turned aside and, and there came the voice that says, pull off your shoes, Moses, for the place that you're standing on is holy ground. It was from that place on the backside of the desert where it seemed like nothing was going on for a long time. But all of a sudden, God shows up. And God begins to speak and begins uh, uh, a work and a call in the life of Moses. And you and I both know the story of how that God called him, amen, to be a leader and to be a spokesman, to be the deliverer of the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh down in Egypt. I believe that we are in this hour that God is going to be paying, amen, his people some special visitations. It may not be the exact same thing as with Moses, but there will be some supernatural events that are going to take place in these last days. It may be while you're washing the dishes at the sink that all of a sudden something happens and God's voice is being heard. I believe that God is preparing, amen, a people. I'm talking about his church to do a work that we have never perhaps realized, amen, the scope of what he has in mind. Amen. I believe that there is coming this anointing of the Holy Ghost that's going to be upon God's people like it has never been before. Now, we look at the young shepherd boy, David, and how that when he was tending his sheep and there came out a lion and a bear, there came an anointing on his life, and he slew a lion and a bear as just a young lad. That took something extraordinary. I believe that we're facing circumstances that we're not going to be able to do it in our own strength. We're not going to be able to do it in our own intellect. But there's coming an anointing, amen, upon God's people, amen, that will take care of the need of the hour. And I also believe that whatever giants that might be in the way, God will help us to subdue them. Amen. 
There's always these spirits that's trying to hinder and halt. But I believe the day is coming that the church is going to be so powerful and so prevalent in the earth and the work of the labor of the kingdom. Amen. That there's not going to be any more hindrances. Well, I, I believe that there's coming a supernatural move of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's going to take place. It's going to change things. I know that we're living in a day where some people are fearful and some are afraid. It's kind of like Gideon hiding behind the wine press. But when the angel came and talked to him and said, Thou mighty man of valor, and began to communicate to him that he was going to be used in a special anointing and uh, to be a deliverer. I want you to know his life changed and he began to be mightily used of God. And it might be just something in those simple elements of life to where you don't feel like maybe you've made a great contribution to the kingdom of God. But if you will be faithful and you will be committed and you will have an anticipation and an expectation in God, I believe that there's going to come that moment in your life, in my life, the same. Amen. That God's going to speak like we've never heard him speak before. A divine visitation is when heaven lays hold on us. I believe it's when the windows of heaven are being opened, amen, and God moves in a very sovereign way. And there comes an illumination, and there comes an understanding, amen, that we have been called, amen, for such a time as this. I believe that the time is ripe, amen, for a heavenly visitation from God himself. I believe that we're living in one of the most historic times since the birth of Christ in Bethlehem's manger. I, I look out at some of you today, and, and some of us, we've had the privilege to go to the land of Israel, and we, we, we've been privileged to, to walk into some of these areas in Bethlehem and, and the Via della Rosa and, and all these things, amen. And that happened a little over 2,000 years ago. But I believe that there's coming a visitation right now in this hour that we are living in and we must prepare for it yes. i'm talking about in ways you can't even imagine right now i'm talking about ways that are marvelous and even beyond maybe our ability to comprehend right now but i believe that when god chooses that moment amen he will also bring it to pass we've got to we've got to come open to god today and say here I am, God. Use me. Here I am, Lord. I'm making myself available to you. I, I'm not here just to show up on Sunday morning, amen, and Wednesday night. I'm, I'm not in this thing, amen, just to go to hospitals and pray for people or go to the funeral home and bury people, amen. I believe there's a greater purpose in my life, in your life, than what we are fulfilling this very hour. The expression of day of visitation is found a handful of times in Scripture. You find in the New Testament, Jesus and both the apostles, amen, they talked about this visitation, literally meaning an inspection as though a shepherd would inspect his sheep. And then yet in the, the uh, Old Testament, the day of visitation was not only the ideal of inspection, but it also was that of acceptance or judgment. I believe that along with what God is going to do and bring it about, amen, a great move of God that's going to bring many into the kingdom of God, there will also be some judgments that could very well be poured out. Right. There are some things I, I am absolutely sure of that God is not happy with, God is not pleased with. And I know that God has a way that we can't even imagine, amen, but I do believe that God wants to use us, His people, that's called by His name, that is filled with His Spirit, to make a difference in the hour on which we live. And what happens is going to depend upon our preparation for it. And so I'm, I'm coming this afternoon. I, I'm asking you, is there any anticipation of a great move of God? I think about it for a little bit. I, I think we go from day to day, from day to day, and sometimes we think it's just always going to be the same. But I feel in the Holy Ghost today, things are about to change. I believe that there's some things that's on the way that, amen, that's going to be 
just boggling our mind of what God is. As a matter of fact, there's already been a, bad, a beginning of these things. There's already a move of God that's up on this world. Amen. And there are multitudes of people that's coming to God. There are multitudes of people that's been involved in Trinitarian doctrine that is now seeing the light of the gospel and being baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. There are miracles that are happening around the globe. There is an unprecedented move of the hearts of people of giving, amen, in these last days like we have never seen before. There are signs and wonders and miracles that are happening, and yet sometimes we are blinded to what God is already doing. We need to prepare for it. I'm not just referring to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe in that wholeheartedly. But I believe that God is visiting his people in a tremendous way that's leading up to the second coming of Jesus Christ. I want God to be free, amen, to look upon me. I, I'm not anyone special above anyone else. But I really do, amen, want to be involved in what God is doing in these last days. I refuse, amen, just to close my eyes and ears, amen, and not realize what's going on. I want to be today uh, an individual that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. I want my eyes to be anointed that I can see things, amen, that my natural eyes can't see. I want a sensitivity to God that takes me above and beyond just a real the, the realm of flesh. I believe that we are spiritual creatures and there's things that's going on in the heavenlies that we need to be tapping into. It's a powerful thing for us to realize that God is about to do something. I think it's even a greater thing that God will let us in on it. Well, I don't think God is wanting to do something and for us to be clueless as to what he's about to do. But I believe that God is preparing a people, amen, that has a heart and mind and spirit to serve him with all. Because when this moment comes, it's not going to be a moment for lazy people. It's not going to be a, a moment for people who are detached from the church. It's not going to be for prayerless people. It's not going to be, amen, for people who don't care about the lost. But it's going to be a unique group of people that God is preparing, amen, for a great visitation of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about something today, amen, that supersedes, amen, just the status quo in any measure. And I'm not talking about being touched by an angel. And I am not talking about goosebumps or just the warm fuzzies. I'm not talking about just a sense of his presence, amen. I'm not talking about just an apprehension today, but I'm talking about an apostolic, genuine outpouring of the Holy Ghost that will absolutely transform our lives beyond where they are today. I believe that God wants to grant revelation. Sometimes we as apostolics, we can become so arrogant to say, well, oh, I know all there is to know about the oneness of God and baptism in Jesus' name. I'm here to declare we've got to know more than that. We've got to learn how to reach the lost in a personal one-on-one evangelism. We've got to allow God to move in us. And allow us to get rid of our egos and, and our selfishness and, and work in our lives today and, and to get our personalities aligned with his personality. Yes. I'm talking about something that will absolutely, radically change our lives. Yes. I'm preaching today because I know there's some people that don't want this. Right. I got my own life. Figured out. I got my own schedule worked out. Hey, man, this is, this is the plan. I'm working it, and, and it's, it's just the way my life is going to be. I'm afraid you're going to miss what God is wanting for your life. I believe today that if we could come to this place and say, God, here I am. I am totally yours. I belong to you. Whatever you want of me, amen, I'll give it to you freely. I'll not withhold anything from you. But if we try to work our, our own agendas out, then God says, I'll just get somebody else. 
Come on, there's, there's a, a sighing and a groaning that's going on in our world today. I believe that there's about to be an eruption of the glory of God to be manifested in this earth. Really, isn't that what happened in the book of Acts chapter 2? And all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared to them cloying tongues as a fire and it set upon each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. It was a phenomenon. There was an event that happened that had never happened before. I'm not talking about a new plan of salvation, and you know that today. But I am talking about a wave of God's glory that we have yet to experience. And what God does, He can do quickly. And I believe it's going to be a quick work. I don't know. You say, Pastor, what what do you think? I I really don't know what to tell you. I just do believe that God is about to do something marvelous. Amen. And I don't know if it's going to be two years or whether it's going to be six months or whether it's going to be eight weeks. I don't know what God's time frame is. That's not for me to know. But I do believe that we have got to be right on course when God is ready to make his move. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost moving on us to the point that we get rid of our doubts and our fears. It's a time when God helps us and we overcome the problems that we've struggled with in the past. I'm talking about times, amen, that our tempers, amen, they get under control and our habits, bad habits are broken. We need a fresh awareness that God is about to do something. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because he knew something the rest of them didn't know. We all stand in amazement and wonder, why didn't they know that he was the Messiah? Don't we? It's, it's, sometimes it's difficult for us to understand how they could have overlooked him. Especially with all the proof of who he was and who he said he was. But if we're not careful, we can miss what God is trying to tell us. We need a fresh awareness of his presence that changes things. Somehow I feel like I'm preaching over somebody's head today. I'm talking about somewhere, some point that we capture the greatness of God and that we understand his ways more clearly. Amen. And that we seize hold of this fresh revelation of the holiness of God where somehow we come to a greater sense and understanding of the importance and the value of worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What I'm preaching to you about this afternoon is that when God begins to move, we're not going to worry about people falling asleep on a Sunday afternoon. We're not going to have to worry about people getting to church on time. We're not going to have to be concerned about people making their way to the prayer room. There's not going to be any begging and pleading, but there's going to be an understanding. There's going to be a knowing that what we do, we got to do it with everything we got and with all the passion that we can ever express. You don't have to worry about people being on their phone texting back and forth. You don't have to worry about people daydreaming and thinking about a tomorrow. I had to worry about gossiping anymore. I'm talking about a divine visitation from God that awakens the consciousness of man. Amen. That we have a mission to accomplish and we have a short time to do it. Come on, does anybody desire a divine visitation of the Lord? Come on, I'm talking about a visitation where we don't have to be reminded to spend time with God. 
It's a day and hour that we careful with our tongues not to tear down but to build up. Come on, it's an hour where people will give liberally and cheerfully. It'll be a time where witnessing will be electric. And worship could very well be overwhelming. I believe that God wants us to have an awareness that, that he's about to do something. If I had all the answers, I'd tell you today, folks, I don't have all the answers. What I have is just a little insight in the Holy Ghost that the Lord is saying, I'm about to do something. God wants to grow us. God wants to lift us. He wants to work in us. He wants us to be totally willing and submissive to him. Amen. We need to be like Isaiah. Here am I, Lord. Send me. God told us that we could call on him and that he would answer. Psalms 91. God comes to those who who prepare for him. I believe that this is a moment in time that we need to really open our hearts and our lives to God. And say, God, I want to be everything that you've designed my life to become. I don't say that lightly because I believe I'm preaching to some people that you really don't care. It's about you and it's not about him. We need, to, we need some changing today. We need to open up our lives to God. We need to search His Word. We need to seek His face. And we need to wait on Him. We, we need to anticipate what He's about to do. Yes. I read in the Word of God where the, there was a pool that once a year the angel of the Lord would come down and trouble the waters and those, the one that would step down first would receive their healing. Yes. That's the kind of anticipation I'm talking about. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to get as close to what God is about to do as I can. I felt a prophetic word a few months ago, and I'm still laying claim to it. There's going to be some miracles that will happen in this prayer room. But I believe that somebody has lost the anticipation of it. Yes. Well, it's kind of hard for me to work it in. Come on, we got to forget about trying to work it in and just make it happen. Because I, I want to be there when the water's in trouble. I want to be there when the angel visits. I want to be there when God steps into the place. And that means that we have to put forth a little effort of anticipation and expectation of what the Holy Ghost is about to do. If we want to sit back and say, God, whenever you get ready, you just come over and wake me up. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he'll say, just go ahead and sleep on. I want to be used to him. Sometimes when we least expect it. But he's, he's going to do this I believe for people that are preparing for it. Look at, look, look at how God has moved in times past. He's always preparing somebody. Hey, Noah, how would you like to build an ark? What? No, it wasn't no surprise. Noah had been cultivating a relationship with God. That when God was getting ready, amen, to, to bring about an ark of safety, all he had to do was turn to Noah. Uh, am I missing, missing you today? When God was trying to show mercy to the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, 
He already had a man to go and search out the city. Abraham. God is orchestrating these events in this congregation and congregations across this world to be prepared for when he gets ready to take action. Ah, God's busy. He's already active. I, I don't play that at all. He's a, he's a mighty God doing a great work. But I believe that there's coming a new level that we have not ever experienced that he wants to use. And sometimes we think, amen, just going uh, that we feel like we're just going through the motions. We're not just going through the motions. We're going through an anticipation of time. So I, I think of an elderly couple who, who waited in the temple, and they had been promised that they would see the Lord's Messiah. We're talking about Anna and Simeon, amen, that when they were there, they were there just taking care of the duties of the temple, day in and day out, week after week after week. No great fanfare, but they had been given a promise, and they kept to that promise, and they anticipated it. They believed that that day would come, that they were not going to die until they saw it. I'm going to dare to believe it myself. Hey, bad. I'm not going to die till I see what I'm feeling in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody needs to get a hold of this today. Come on, they had prepared all all of this time for this moment. My eyes have seen the Messiah. I'm here to tell you that it's going to be worth every effort. It's going to be worth it all. Amen. If we will just hold fast to God, because God has got something good planned for us. I challenge you to make room in your life for a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Come on, a visitation of God into your personal life is more important than a trip to the gym. It's more important than your daily walk or your daily newspaper or your daily cup of coffee. Hey, but somehow we've got to somehow make room for God, hey amen, to just invade us. What, what I'm saying today, there's nothing wrong with you having a cup of coffee in your hand. But somewhere in the midst of that, you need to say, God, intervene anytime you want to. Amen. Speak to me anytime you want to. I'll set that cup of coffee down. I'll give attention to you, God. I'll listen to the voice of the Lord. Sometimes we just need to clear out the clutter out of our lives. Nah, I'm really seeing a need for people to clear out their calendars. I've heard people say, oh, well, I would, but I'm obligated. I think we need to clear out some of these shallow obligations that we think we have. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they did not know the day of their visitation. time to clear some things out. We are all way too busy. Will it ever change? I'm talking about God priorities this afternoon. If we don't make the priority for Him, we'll never make it for no one else. We'll become selfish and self-centered. And we'll miss what God is wanting to do. Come on, we we gotta we gotta make time to commune with the Master. Come on, we we've gotta make time to worship the King. I'm, I'm your pastor. You trust me for a moment here. We've been about this close to a breakthrough in the recent weeks. Come on, everybody's nodding here. Those are, it's, it's on cue here. You know what I'm talking about. Because you know what? There's something rising. There's something building. There's something going on in the spirit world. 
what we need to do is to detach ourselves from everything, amen, that would ever hinder us and beset us and come in and build a giant bonfire in the prayer room and come into the sanctuary and build a, another fire in worship. Come on, we need to be able to touch God and let God touch us in a supernatural way. I believe he is hungry for that today. I wonder if we're hungering for him today. More of you, God. We've got to open our hearts to the word of the Lord. You've got to let the word of the Lord come to you. I've re referenced it probably the last four services, and the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I believe the Word is trying to reach us, trying to impact us. The Spirit of God is trying to really help us, not hurt us one bit to try to help us because I believe He wants us to excel in His kingdom and be prepared for what He is about to do in a divine visitation. I believe the day of the Lord is at hand. I do. I believe that. I believe that the day of His visitation is at hand. The Word of the Lord has a lot to say about it as you see the day approaching. And I'm not going to preach that today. But because we, we are understanding that we are living in the end time, there are much preparation that we need to make. And perhaps there's none greater at this moment than for us to work on ourselves. I close today by saying... What we're trying to convey to us has to come down to an individual affair. What God wants to do in this congregation, it has to happen right here. Yes. Right. Let's start right here. Sometimes it only takes one person to break out of the mold and break into the Holy Ghost for others to follow. Yes. Amen. Are you that individual? I realize today, I haven't preached real evangelistic. But I'm trying to share with you what I feel in the Holy Ghost that God wants to do. And we can, we can receive it or we can ignore it. It's just that easy. So I'm just going to ask you the question, you know, asking myself, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? What do you want to do about it? Come on, somebody give me some answers here today. Come on, this, this service is different. Worship, brother. Worship. We've got to worship. Amen. Brother Barry speaking up worship. Any, anybody else want to resound that? There's something that's got to be birthed out of us. Yes. Pastor come along and say, you know, we're going to put our banner up and we're going to fast and pray for the next 40 days like we've done before. People do it because they feel an obligation. Feel like they need to participate. That's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about somewhere, somehow in this genuine baptism of the Holy Ghost that we received I got it when I was 11 years old. Still real tonight. Somewhere out of this experience and this walk and this fellowship I've had with God, he's telling me, amen, you better get ready for what I'm about to do. I said he's talking to me. I don't know if he's talking to you, but I'm telling you what I, he's talking to me about. And it's only going to happen when we let it happen to us as individuals. You want it to happen to you? We'll let that happen to you. Amen. That means there's going to have to be some changes on Monday. Amen. Tuesday. Right. Amen. 
It's not going to be something that can just happen and say, well, that, I felt maybe God was trying to talk to me on that March the 22nd sermon, but yeah, that was last week now. That's old news. We're missing God when God's trying to connect with us time and time again. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let's just wait on Him for a moment. Jesus, we need you. We need you, Jesus. We're hungering for you, God. We're opening our lives to you, God. God, we want to become, Lord, what you've designed our lives to be. In the name of Jesus. In thy name, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Kaya Torobo Kosatarara Baya Satarabaha. Kaya Torobo Kosiatarabaha. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just feel led to just ask today if there'd be some that would just commit to God in in a personal way today. I, I, I'm not going to put any words in your mouth. That's up to you. But if you would just commit to God in preparing for his visitation. You're just willing to make a, a deeper commitment than you've made before. I just wondered it, and if you would do that today. And think about what we're saying here today very seriously. Would you acknowledge it by standing before God and say, God, I'm preparing for a visitation of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody, need to let the Holy Ghost visit you right now. Come on, let the Holy Ghost visit us right now. He wants to help us. In the name of Jesus, receive you the Holy Ghost. Be renewed in the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, right now. Jesus, help us to open our soul to you.
God. You may be seated for a moment here. I feel that there is becoming an, an awakening. There is a sensing of what's going on because God is God is wooing. God, God is drawing. God is speaking. If there ever was a time we need to totally give in to that, it's right now. Totally, totally give up to God. I'm like anyone else. I've had dreams and aspirations of doing a lot of things in life, but I've come to the conclusion that if that's not in God's plan, it's not important. Amen. What's important is for me to be right on course with God. Right on course with God. So let's not, let's not get sidetracked by this world, the cares of this world, but we can grow spiritually. Yes, amen. And in our spiritual growth, God will give us visitations like we have longed for amen. and we are praying for. One thing is that we got to keep the faith. In light of the fact that God is going to do some things that's going to amaze us. Now, I do not want you to misunderstand this, Pastor. This is not dangling a carrot in front of you. This is giving you a word today in the Holy Ghost that God is going to do it. And we have the opportunity to be in on it. If we want it. If we want it. The Bible says these signs should follow them that believe. Yes, Lord Jesus. I believe there's miracles that can happen. Yes. Yes. Any believer lay hands on someone else. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, you may say, well, I haven't experienced that. Maybe that day is yet to come. Yes. God's preparing you. God's getting you ready. Amen. I believe it. Thank you for giving attention to the, to the word today. Hallelujah. Let's let the Holy Ghost challenge us from this day forward. Will we let him do it? Yes, amen. Okay. Visitation I'm talking about, you don't, you don't have to get Lead with people to do the work of the kingdom. They're just going to step up and say, here I am. What can I do? Yes. I don't say that negatively. We got great people doing great things in this local assembly. I'm saying there's still so much more we could do. So much more could be accomplished. Yeah. It's true. 
One of the things that's been prophesied that is that there's going to be a great return of prodigals. Somebody needs to buy into that. Somebody needs to anticipate that. Somebody really needs to believe it. Well, I believe God's going to give us a visitation of prodigals, among many other things. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's all pray together one more time. Lord Jesus, we are grateful today for the Holy Ghost. We're thankful, Lord, that you've allowed us, Lord, to come under your umbrella today. God, we thank you, Lord, for your voice that is heard here today. We pray today that you'd help us to have this endearment to you. God, that you would strengthen the body of Christ. Help us to have a great anticipation and expectation of the days that are before us. Help us to prepare daily, Lord, for the work that is before us. We believe it. We accept it. Through faith in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. God bless you. We dismiss you in the fear of the Lord today. Hope that uh, most of you will be able to come back at 6 o'clock for the youth service. We're going to have a great youth service tonight. <laughs>